Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to Heal Your Heart, Heal Your Body with Marina Crispy. Happy Friday, everyone. It's Friday. You know, I don't celebrate Fridays like, woohoo, it's the weekend. I mean, every day is a good day, right? Even if it's not so good, it's the best day that you have because it's the only day you have. We don't have yesterday any longer. We don't have tomorrow because we're not there yet. And to be quite honest with you, we are not always promised tomorrow. So today is our best day ever. So even though we might have stuff coming against us or people in our life that might be pulling us down today, make it your best day. Make it the best day you can because it's the only one we have, right? So today is episode 27 and it's day 20. Day 20 already, 20 podcasts I've done in the 50 podcasts in 60 days. And today we're going to be talking about empathy. Yeah, empathy. I think uh, when I was in my quiet time with God, God gave this to me today because I've been struggling with it a little bit. Um, Some of you may be able to relate with me on this. Um... I don't know. It's been it's been a tough one. It's been a tough one the last couple of days. I don't know if you've had someone in your life who is dwelling in their stuff and constantly bringing it to you um, or exaggerates some of their stuff so you will do more for them or they just want you with them all the time. And um, I'm, I've been really feeling guilty about this. And today when I was talking to God, I'm like, God, show me. Show me what I need to do. Show me how I'm able to, to get through this without getting bitter and resentful and angry. Because all those things I could feel starting to fester up. Maybe it's your spouse. Maybe it's a best friend. Maybe... It's apparent. They just are like sucking the life out of you. Or I don't know. I I was trying to say that maybe it's attention that they are striving for attention. Or maybe, you know, I shouldn't doubt how the person feels. But you know what? Some days it's like, all right, enough is enough. We all have our crap. And I have been like that. And then I feel guilty because I'm like, you fool, why didn't you just love them through it? Well, so God gave me this today to talk about because he's not only teaching you through me, he's teaching me as well. So he gave me a couple of different verses in scripture to work on. And one was Ephesians 4, 2, be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with one another in love. And then he gave me another one. (laughs) I know. Sometimes when he's trying to teach us, we're like, okay, God, I'll listen. But we really don't want to because we're tired. We're struggling in this whole thing right so in the other ones um nobody cares this is interesting this is a quote by teddy roosevelt nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care ah was that like for me it's like i know health because i'm in fun- i'm in functional medicine Um, I know scripture because I'm studying for my ministry and these people really don't care about that. They just want me to know, they want to know that I care. Well, I care and I love you, but give me a break. That's what I feel like. And God's just waking me up to it, telling me that's not, that's not being of him. Being of him is having empathy for them. 
Not taking on their stuff. Nope. Not doing everything they want you to do. Nope. Not being with them 24-7. Nope. But he wants us, therefore, to theolo- 1 Theologians 5.11, therefore encourage one another and build one another up just as you are doing. So currently, right now, as I mentioned a lot, of to- a lot with you all, that I have a mentor and that I am constantly working on myself, be it reading books, listening to books on tape, doing workbooks and, and different things. So people do call me a time the trauma whisperer because when I work with others with their autoimmune disease or stuff that they're struggling with, I can literally hone in on the trauma that they're hanging on to to help them release that to be able to live their best life and to move on. And then their their autoimmune disease starts to take the turn for the better. Inflammation goes down in their body. Their lives begin to change. I'm 14 years of remission. How did I get there? I found the root cause and the root cause was my crap I was carrying with me for so many years, right? So Mastin Kip is um, a trauma person also, and he's phenomenal. So I'm currently doing his, I'm kind of try, I'm right now doing his, um, his course on, um, own your power. I believe that's the name of it. Let me just double check. There's so many books that I have in my book collection. I, I'm almost positive it's own your power. Yes. Um, anyway, so Um, Own Your Power. Fabulous book. He's fabulous. I would love to work with him. I mean, I, I would, I just think what he's doing is phenomenal. I've been saying for many years, probably the last 12 years, that autoimmune disease is connected to trauma, emotional and physically. So this person that I'm struggling with has autoimmune diseases. They know that I'm trained in this area of functional medicine and nutrition. And I have my own success story. I have many success stories of many people that I've worked with dealing with their trauma. Oh, but this person doesn't want to deal with that trauma. Instead, they would rather uh, name everything that is not feeling well today. So it might be connected to this autoimmune disease. Maybe it's connected to that. And it wears you down. It wears you down. So today when I was in my alone time with God, I'm like, God, give me the power. Give me the strength. Give me the wisdom on how to deal with this person because I can literally feel that I'm at that point where you're going to snap. And I don't want to be there. I don't like the feeling. I don't like the ickiness of it. And how many of you can relate to that? Like somebody, maybe it's a best girlfriend or your guy friend and they're in a funk, but they've been in this funk for many of years and you're always re- find yourself repeating yourself, telling them to like change a habit or go and play this sport or go to this you know, community, join another group you know, or do some self-help and they're still wallowing in it. And after a while, you just want to step away. But if it's somebody really close, it's hard to just completely step away. So when I was in prayer today and God was like, Marina, you need to work on empathy. Well, I have empathy. I know I have empathy because when I'm with a client, I can literally feel it. Like I can step into their shoes and I can, even though some days it's hard, I have empathy. But why don't I have empathy for this particular person right now? Maybe the frustration is that the person doesn't want to help themselves. Maybe the person is okay with living like that, regardless if it's just not a fun way to live. Maybe they just like living in the woe is me so they get the attention. Maybe they're feeling like they're missing some kind of attention. I have no idea what is happening with it right now. And it's like I had to go to God with it. 
So he gave me the one theologians 511. Therefore, encourage one another and build another up just as you are doing. So I'm like, well, I typically build the person up, but I'm like, oh, maybe I haven't been like supportive building up. Maybe I have been more forceful building up because you know what happens when you get frustrated and you get, it's like, oh, you feel like you're being choked out. So you're like, yeah, that's, I think that's where he's catching me there. So I need to get myself in check there. And then I also need to get myself in check over here with, uh, oh, goodness gracious, which one was it? Yeah, Ephesians 4, 2, be completely humble and gentle, be patient, bearing with another, with one another in love. I love this person dearly. I truly do. And I'm sure you love your friend, your coworker, your sibling, your spouse, maybe it's a parent. I'm sure you love them too. But we need to love them and then lift them up and allow them to do their work. And if they're not going to do the work, then we have to set boundaries. And that's what I came to the conclusion today that I need to set boundaries. I need to just say, you know, I, I, I know you're not feeling well and I know... I get it, but today we're going to talk about something good. Today we're going to have a good day. Today we're going to be grateful for that we're above the ground and not below it, right? So I'm going to set the boundaries now because I need the boundaries because I can feel the tension coming as soon as I see this person. I can feel the tension that I'm having with my poor husband because I'm frustrated and then he asks me a little question and if it sort of resembles of what this person keeps calling me on, I'm like, rah, 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 and I'll bite his head off for no reason, no reason at all. It's just that I'm taking that frustration out on him. How many of you do that? How many of you do that? Right? We always take it on the the one we love, the one that's closer to us, they get the crappy deal, right? Because um, we know they're still going to be there and he'll be like, okay, okay, Reen, just relax, relax. Sometimes he'll say, why the heck are you biting my head off? You know, and it's understandable because I'm taking out what's bugging me on him and it's not really fair at all. So in my reading today and sitting in meditation today and God telling me I need to love this person, uplift this person, but I still need to set boundaries, right? Because going back to yesterday, not yesterday, the day before's podcast, where some people get healed and some people don't, it's not because God loves one more than the other and he's going to heal one and not the other. It's all on our attitude, right? All on our perspective, all on our belief, and all on what we think it, we believe in our heart is going to happen, right? So I'm going to listen, and I'm going to be obedient, and I am going to have empathy, and I'm going to share love with this person, but I'm going to set boundaries. I'm going to set strict boundaries. And you guys have to find where your boundaries lie, are you going to change the subject? Are you going to don't you can't dodge the person now. If you see them walking down the hallway at the office, you can't jump into the restroom or jump into somebody else's office and pretend you're having a conversation with them or pretend you didn't see them at the grocery store or these kind of things. You need to just set healthy boundaries for both of you. Change the subject. Let them know you love them. But not today. Or give them one time for complaint. And then after that, there's no more complaining. So this morning after I, I sat and meditated on this. Um, and what God was telling me that I needed to do. Um, when I spoke to this person, I saw things differently. And I said, okay, if you want that done, here, I'll give this to you. You can go give it a try or you can wait for me to do it 
after I'm finished working today. Hmm. Be surprised on what somebody can do when they really want it, even though they didn't want to do it themselves. So the person was able to do what they were doing all on their own. Didn't need me to do it. So we need to set boundaries. We need to um, love them where they are. I know that frustration sometimes can mask the love that we have for them. And we need to uplift them, share. Now, I told you I'm doing Mastin Kip's um, Claim Your Power um, workbook. I got the book. And I'm also doing the free um, 40 days online. Lo and behold, I shared it with my cousin and I shared it with a good friend of mine. We are all doing it together. We're all in different areas. But I know day six was really bad for me. Day six took probably three days for me to get through. So when my cousin got through it, Got to day six, I was I was able to support her through day six. When my friend, he was going through it, I was able to support him through day six. He rocked day six, didn't have the struggle that she and I had with day six. So it's we're doing it as a community. So if you're working on something like that, similar like that, then share it with the person. Or maybe we all have stuff to clean up. Right? We all have stuff to clean up. So maybe if you, he, you feel that this friend or this coworker or this family member, or whoever it is, may need it, join in with them. Buy the book, buy yourself, buy them the book, do the 40 day, or do something that you can do together. If you know that you could lose a few pounds and this person is constantly complaining about their weight, or maybe you can get a little healthier. Maybe you're in pretty good shape. But you just want to tighten up on your diet. Like eat cleaner. Maybe work out a little more. Challenge them. Say, okay, I'm going to do this program. and You do it with me. We'll do it together. Challenge them. So now you're encouraging them. But you're not going to do the diet for them. They're still going to have to do the work. But it's taking that off of you and giving them the work to do, but you're there to support them. I love doing that in my challenge groups because like this challenge, I'm challenging myself to reach as many people as I can in 50 podcasts in 60 days. I was scared to death to get on this thing and do a podcast. What am I going to talk about? Am I qualified to talk about God's word? Am I... You know what? And then finally, God was like pushed and just pushed me. And I was able to challenge myself to do this, right? Did I challenge myself to get healthy instead of being on all the medication that I was on with rheumatoid arthritis? Yes, I did. I didn't want to be sick anymore from the medication. And I didn't want to be sick anymore from the disease. And I needed to find a different way. And in my learning... And in all of my training that I've gone through, it came back to my trauma. My stuff I was carrying from all the way from a little girl to the time and present day. We all carry crap, right? So it was unloading my baggage, dropping it off, not taking it to my next destination. I was not taking that luggage with me anymore. So these are the things that we need to look at. And those are challenges, challenging ourselves. So if we can challenge ourselves to rise above, then we need to challenge our friend, our coworker, our loved one, whomever it is in our life that is like sucking the life out of us to do the work. So I challenge. I'm like, okay, I'll do it with you, but you have to do the work. I'm not doing all the work. This is a good, great program. You can follow the program. If you don't follow it like you're supposed to, that's your deal, not mine. But if I start looking good better and I'm fitting into my clothes better and I'm feeling good and you're not, it's not on me, it's on you. So you're still giving them the responsibility, but you're still loving them through it. Does that make sense? And that's what God's asking us to do. He's asking us to use ourselves 
to help raise them up and humble ourselves enough not to be better than them because we're not better than them. We're all on the same playing lot. So we're not bettering, being better than them and thinking we're better than them and giving them the impression that we think they're better. I'm going to say, hey, Mary, I know you're struggling with that. I'm, I'm going to, I need to heal myself in a way. So I'm going to do this. If you want to join me, join me. We can, we can do it together and then we can help each other, raise each other up through it. Doesn't that make sense? Doesn't that seem better than just getting so frustrated, so angry, resentful, trying to dodge them at the grocery store when you see them walking down the hall, trying to jump into the restroom so they don't see you or they think you're preoccupied, that you can't listen to them at the moment. Or if you see their call come through, you silent it because you feel guilty after that, don't you? I do. So why don't we raise them up and bring them up with us, challenge them, challenge them to be a part of something with you that it's not sucking the life out of you, but it's making them do their own work. And at the end, like if it's going to do something about getting healthy at the end, then you say the winner gets the other one buys the other one. I don't know. Day at the spa, like, or a facial, or I have a bet right now with a cousin in England, and um, we both have to speak Italian by a certain date, and if I'm speaking better than he is, which I think I'm going to win on that one, um, then he will have to pay me 20 euro, or vice versa. But I'm, I'm going to win on it. I know I am. He's not. Just saying. But anyway, these are just challenges that we do. But they're fun. They're not like trying to make one better than the other. It's to help each other do better. To learn the language. To lose the weight. To get healthier. To heal your trauma. To love on yourself more. To depend on yourself more. So these are just things... That God has called on me today because I was struggling with it. Struggling so bad. I was like, God, just help me. Because it's making me feel like crap. It's making me feel horrible that I feel this way every time I see this person. I love them. But the stress of what's going to come out of their mouth is just ridiculous. So this is what he gave me today. He gave me... Um, one theologians, uh, five eleven. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up, just as you are doing. So right now, I'm doing that Mastin Kipps book. Right, I have my cousin doing it, and I have my good friend, who's also a coach, doing it. We're doing it together. We're all in different stages. Well, now my cousin and I are on in the same area, just about. But my friend is just starting it, so he's still he's still on. Actually, he just aced day six. Day six just nearly kicked my butt. But anyway, so we're doing the work together. Instead of being blah, 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 constantly crying, I encouraged them to join me. So I'm healing my stuff. They're healing their stuff, and we get it. Do you know we're all being responsible for our own stuff, but we're raising each other up. We're sort of bearing each other's burdens and we're encouraging one another to build up instead of pulling each other down or one of us pulling the other ones down. And just as I'm doing, I'm doing the work, they're doing the work. So there's that. Encourage them. Challenge them. Tell them you'll do it with them. Tell them you'll join them, but they have to do the work. You can't do the work for them, and you can't be the sounding board every two minutes. Now, with my two fellow um, workbookers here, we'll literally say, holy cow, that one was a tough day. Holy, that one knocked me out. Um, And it's all good, right? So the other one is Ephesians 4, 2, be completely humble and gentle and be patient, bearing with one another. Be patient with them. 
but set your boundaries, set good boundaries, boundaries like that are kind, but boundaries that you're not going to be sucked in day after day after day after day. I hope that helps somebody out there. I know it helped me and I hope that helped you. I hope you guys have a great rest of your Friday and you have a beautiful weekend. I will see you tomorrow. I love you all. And thanks so much for joining me on these podcasts. It really makes my day. Love you all. Take care. Bye-bye.